This great use case was created by our friend Mutas from IBM Poland and has to do with how we eliminate false positives coming into our system. There are many technologies out there, uh, and IPSs and endpoint protection technologies that can inform us about attacks happening in our network, SQL injection, Java vulnerability, privilege escalation, you name it. Uh, and some of these technologies provide us, when they are informing us about all those attacks, with the source and destination IP, and importantly, the CVE vulnerability that this attack is exploiting. And they send the logs with that information to Curator. And those attacks are quite real. I mean, they are really happening. The SQL injections are coming. I mean, all those attacks are coming. But if the vulnerability that that CVE reports upon is not present in my system because it has been patched or for whatever reason is not there, you really don't care. Those are false positives. Don't tell me about the things that I should not be worried about. Tell me only about the things about that attack vulnerabilities that the particular endpoint that you are reporting upon on the destination IP is vulnerable. But the beauty is that Curator in the asset database can get the information from all the vulnerabilities by the QVM scanner or any scanner that you are using. So Curator has the potential of knowing, hey, this attack is not relevant because the vulnerability is not there. Let's look at that in an example. Here we have three vulnerabilities. This is a Java uh, one, this is a .NET, and this is a security channel vulnerability uh, that, that they are all being sensed by this technology that, it, that this is the destination IP. The question is, which of them are, are really vulnerable? Which of them should I be worried about? And which of them are false positive that I can easily ignore? So here we have the three events, and if we look at them, we have in the payload here the information about, this is the first uh, vulnerability, 2013-2459. This is the second vulnerability, and the CVE is uh, right here. And here is the third vulnerability, and we have the last CVE right here. So if we were to do this manually, what, what do we do? Well, we go to Vulnerability Manager, and we do a search in which we say on the destination IP is this vulnerability there, and we see that it is not there. I don't care about that one. If we do the search on the other vulnerability, the 2010-3332, no there. False positive, I don't care about you. And if we do the search with the 2013-2459 vulnerability, whoa, this one is remarkable. This is the Java vulnerability, and this is the one I need to worry. This is the one that, for example, I need to change the risk score and send it to Bigfig and say, hey, take care of this one right away, pal, uh, because this one, uh, somebody's knocking at the door of that one. So what we want to do is to fire an offense only when the attacks go into vulnerable uh, events. Well, from the offenses, we know that we can do AQL searches. What we're going to do is that we're going to show you how we created an AQL search. This actually was done by creating an extension, as we have shown in previous videos on AQL, that you can extend the AQL, which basically has a function that asks, is this IP does this IP contains this particular vulnerability? So when we get this, this type of information, automatically the, the offenses and the rule is going to launch a query that asks that question. If the answer is yes, you fire the offense. If no, you ignore it. So we're going to start with a system. We have no logs. We're looking at the logs uh, in real time, and we have no offenses. And what we're going to do is that we're going to launch those three um, logs. We're going to replay them using the log run command, as we have done very many other times. So when we replay those, 
here we see the three events has been played and actually this is a, a, a you understand this when you see the rule this is actually an uh, a new event that we launch as a consequence of the rule having fire and if we go to the offenses tab we get an offense let's actually take a look at the offense when we click on it as I like to do and done it many times before I like to click on the rule that and here is this the rule that was actually written that basically reads when the actual event is calling and this is the function extension again in the part two of the video we're going to show the all the details how this was actually made but in basically we're asking is the destination IP of the event does that contain this CVE ID? And if the answer to the AQL query is yes, then we fire an offense. And as the offense, we actually dispatch a new event, and that's the event we saw in the logs, exploit attempt, and the destination is vulnerable.